Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be adding kind of a bonus uh, to our player. So we're going to be doing a dash effect and this dash will be pretty simple. Now we're going to do most of this in the player itself. So uh, in order to do this, we're going to need a few uh, well things, right? Now, one thing we'll need uh, is some variables at the top. We'll create uh, maybe a border here with a bunch of dashes. And we'll just copy it. And right here, we'll say dash, variable dash speed. And this will be an int, and it will be about a thousand. And then we'll say dash length. And then give this a uh, float and say 0 0.5. And then we can say variable is dashing, uh, which is a Boolean, and we'll say equal to false. Okay, now what we're gonna essentially do is do two things. We're also gonna create a new variable called uh, dash effect or dash node. So this is gonna be an on ready variable, dash node equal to preload some sort of dash thing. Now, what is this thing? Well, uh, let's go to our player here. So let's find our player. And we're going to duplicate this guy. So duplicate. Uh, let's name it player uh, dash effect player. So we know it's for the player. And then in here, we're going to right click the player anim. We're going to click it and say make scene root and just to repeat the rest. Now in here, uh, we can keep it on the and it doesn't really matter what frame it is, to be honest, um, because we'll barely see it, but we can say idle down. Doesn't really matter too much. Let's save. And back over here, we will go to the actual player or the code and now load in that new effect that we just did. Now, essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna use something called tweening, which I think we've used before. And what we'll do is we're going to create one of those dash effects right behind the player. And then that dash effect will tween itself or not tween, but reduce its modulation all the way to zero and then disappear. So that way we'll have a trail effect right behind the player. So now what we can do is create a function called dash and this will be the actual a dash effect. So here we can say if is dashing and then we can ask if not colliding. Now the question is, what is this if not colliding though? Well, we're gonna actually create or add a raycast2d. Now this raycast2d is a ray that we can essentially throw out in the world. And I'm going to take the target position and put it at zero or 24 and zero. And that's how long it's gonna be. Now we could make it shorter, but this essentially uh, will act as the check to see if I can dash because I don't want it just dash into a wall, because if that's the case, I might go through the wall. So this will check to see if I can dash or not. Now, what I need to do though, is actually make this work. So on the top with the dash, uh, maybe we can put it right after here. We're gonna need a variable colliding. Right, this is the Boolean that we just made. And we can set this to false by default. And then we're gonna create an on ready variable body cast, and this is going to be the get node body check that we just made. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to set the collision uh, to a target position. So what we'll do is we'll set it equal to the input vector. And we'll do that right below, uh, or actually we'll do it right after the, whoops, right there, outside of the if statement. So uh, ooh, actually, I think we need that inside because otherwise it would error. The input vector, it will take it and multiply it by, let's say 50, okay? Um, realistically, you can always do 20 or something. That also works. Okay, now uh, we can actually check to see if we dash. So we can say if input is actually just pressed dash, which I believe we might have to actually add. Then we can also say if not colliding, then we can say if is dashing is equal to true. Okay. Now, okay. So what we need to do is we need to add 
uh, this. So colliding equals body cast is colliding. And this will check to see if we're colliding or not. Okay. Now, uh, what we'll do as well is do right here in the if attacking, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, we will also check to see if is dashing is true or false. We'll also say if the dashing is false, then we can also do all this stuff. Okay. Now, the kind of issue with this, uh, of course, is that the input vector uh, is in here, right? So that means I have to be in here for this. All right, so this has to be inside. And uh, what we can do is now call the dash function. Okay, now in the dash function, let's continue this, we want to create a tween, we'll say variable tween, and we want to get the direction to, to so where we're going to go. We don't know which direction we're going to go. So we're going to get the animation tree and get the parameter blend tree. And I believe we'll have to actually say blend space here. Uh, that goes right there. And we'll delete one of these brackets. All right, there we go. Now what we can do is we'll tween the property of the position to towards uh, whatever the direction is. Okay. Now we're going to create this dash effect here. But this dash node is actually the dash node that we just made. So we'll fix that other error in just a second. Let's continue the dash effect itself. And now what we'll do is we will take the dash effect or the dash uh, temp that we just made. We're going to adjust two things in it, the direction and the global position. Now, the direction is a variable that we'll have to create inside of the dash effect, which we'll do in just a second. Now, this will finish the dash. So we need another function that says finish dash and is pa uh, dashing is equal to false. So this tells us that we finish dashing. All right. Okay. Now we have this guy target position uh, body cast. Okay. So we just have body cast like so. And that should work. Okay. Now in the dash effect, uh, what we want to do here is create a script and inside of this guy, we can create a script, put this in the scripts folder, player, uh, we'll put it in here, create, and in here, it's actually quite easy, we just need to create a phys uh, variable uh, direction. And then we want to create a physics process function where it moves. Now, the cool part is that we can modulate the or tween the modulation. So essentially, what we're going to manually do is take the modulate a and slowly bring it to zero like that. And once it's zero or less than a certain amount, we'll just queue free. So we'll say if the modulate a is less than 0 0.01, we'll queue free. Okay, so now let's make sure we have the dash effect or dash here. Okay, so it's V. Oops, saying body cast is not a thing uh, is because we say body cast like this. So let's make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, now let's play and test this out. All right, now if I try dashing, it seems to work somewhat. Okay, the issue is that the dash function is only being called inside of here. So this has to actually go outside of the uh, is action just pressed. So now I believe we should have more proper dash effect. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, figure out what is going on. I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, the problem was that the dash was actually one line over. So we do have to make sure that the dash is uh, at the very end. And if this is too confusing, maybe we can just put it at the very beginning. Although I'm not actually 100% sure that will work because the order does matter, but we can double check. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but we see here that the position of the uh, node is a little different than the actual player. And that is because of this guy. So maybe we can try uh, zero see if that works. And we might have to just adjust accordingly. Okay, so it looks pretty decent. This is pretty a pretty decent dash effect. Now, the only thing is that the dash uh, player shows up in front of the other player. So uh, we should be able to make this behind by doing that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that will work because it might show uh, now it shows behind the actual grass. So what we'll do is maybe say uh, y sort 
and here, maybe just do one and try that. All right, there we go. Now it shows up behind the, our player, so it looks a little nicer. Now, if you want to increase the actual dash, of course, we can just go over here to the top and increase the dash speed or the depth length, and that will increase how much uh, we go in the dash. Uh, we can also just increase right here. So here, this is how long we dash for, so we can do uh, 0.5 instead, maybe. Try it. Oh, no, I believe it's actually the opposite, so we would want to slow it down or make it faster. So I, I just slowed it down. So we want to make it faster by saying 0.1. But of course, uh, you are more than welcome to find whatever you like and change around with the values. And since this is 0, 0, I'm just going to remove that, actually. And yeah, so this is pretty much it. This was our dash effect. Um, yeah, I think this is the end of the series. Um, if you guys want to check out more of my videos, uh, definitely check them out on Coding Class on YouTube. Um, I do also have a website. And of course, join my uh, email listing. I always try to send out really useful uh, challenges and tips that I learned throughout the years uh, and anything I do learn in the future. So uh, definitely check it out. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in the future. And bye-bye for now.